Hi, welcome to the brand new episode of Youth Diary. Skin is one of the largest and important sense organ in our body. But pollution and erratic lifestyle have taken a toll on our skin, leading to various ailments. While everybody wants a flawless skin, in today's age, it is fast becoming an eluding dream. For all those viewers who want a flawless skin and a luxurious mane, we have with us our dermatocosmetologist, Dr. Anjana Mohan, Srine Medicity Cochin. Hello doctor, welcome to our show. Doctor, as I mentioned about flawless skin, how far is it from reality to achieve this? Uh, most of us, almost everyone, decide to have a flawlessly beautiful and clear, perfect skin. But factors such as inadequate sleep, inadequate nutrition, hormonal changes, stress, overexposure to sunlight, all these cause result in lustreless and lifeless skin. So if you try correcting all this, though all these though there is a genetic factor lying behind it it can be reversed to a okay. certain extent okay hair is a marvelous structure without any vital function presence of hair at right amount at right places is equally important what is your view on this question having beautiful hair plays an important role in the overall beauty of a person on an average a person has around 1 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50 thousand hair follicles no follicles are formed after birth but who, whatever number of follicles a person is born with, that stays with him, unless it gets destroyed due to various reasons. So you mean to say that the hair growing oils and shampoos which are available in the market doesn't work? No, absolutely not. Okay. None of these miracle shampoos or magic oils, they don't compensate for inadequate nutrition. Okay. And mainly genetics, that is the most important factor okay. that determines a per whether a person can have, you know, beautiful hair or, you know, smooth, flawless skin. On average, a person's hair grows around 0.45 mm per day. That's around 1 cm per month. Like I said, no follicles are formed after birth and our hair goes through three phases. One is the growing phase and the resting phase and the falling phase. The growing phase is called the anagen phase and the falling phase is called the telogen phase. Okay, And the growing phase, it lasts for around 3 years to 6 years. Okay, okay, and the falling phase lasts around two to three months. Does all the hair enter into the anagen phase simultaneously? No. Um, in a normal individual, around 85% of the scalp hair will be in the anagen phase and the remaining 10 to 15% will be in the telogen phase. Okay. So, not all the hair are in one particular phase at a time. On an average, a person loses around 100 to 150 hair per day. 150 hair per day, per day so yes. that means losing 10 to 20 hair per day is nothing it's, it's not normal enough. it is considered when you label a person having hair fall is when they lose more than 150 hair per day like if you lose 10 to 20 hair per day it's natural it's normal okay. yeah next doctor what are the common causes of hair fall um, causes of hair fall are many like I already said hormonal changes inadequate nutrition hectic schedules um, um, hectic uh, lifestyle then drinking smoking then um, in some cases hormonal disturbances which is called uh, male pattern alopecia or androgenetic alopecia or female pattern alopecia that is male pattern alopecia is seen in females that is mainly hormonal and again dietary disturbances okay. and some do suffer from a condition called trichotillomania where they tend to pluck their own hair and and that is again another condition and another entity called alopecia areata which is an autoimmune condition whereas patients often complain that they are losing hair in a patchy way and so that is purely autoimmune most of the people almost everyone believe that you know when they have when they develop patchy loss of hair it is mainly due to fungus or bacterial or it is contagious no patchy loss of hair per se is alopecia areata which can be seen over your scalp as well as over your beard area or anywhere in the body for that matter it is a purely autoimmune condition it can't be prevented but once it occurs, we can always treat it Okay, it is though and, and plus I would like to emphasize on one point that it is self-limiting condition. Mm? You have to wait for around six months for it to regrow. If it doesn't regrow, then you have to consider cons consulting a qualified dermatologist. Okay. And also deficiency of certain hormones and increase in vitamin A can also lead to hair fall. Like I said, biotin, other, other uh, factors responsible for hair loss, that is biotin deficiency, um, increase or decrease in thyroid hormones, then essential fatty acid deficiency, protein energy malnutrition, all these can result in hair loss. Doctor, you mentioned about males. What about for females? 
one of the most com most common causes of hair loss in females after delivery that is postpartum hair loss it is also called telogen effluvium okay. in males also telogen effluvium does take take place but following stress or uh, surgery or an infection or um, some certain drug intake apart from all this there is another cause for hair loss which is drug intake certain drugs on long term usage does in, uh, induce hair loss apart from all these reasons uh, one more uh, one more cause i would like to emphasize zinc deficiency which is very common in almost everyone and especially in females pregnancy and lactation so zinc supplements and multivitamin supplements also play a, plays a very important role in reversing hair fall for all our viewers can you suggest a good hair care regimen yes of course hair has got a non living part and a living part the under the scalp it's a living part and above the scalp it is a non living shaft right so um hair is composed of uh, seven, uh, 85% keratin 7% lipids 3% water and 2% pigment which is melanin melanin gives black color to our hair you don't require to wash your hair every day washing thrice a week would be fine okay doctor let's go to our next question Uh, hello doctor my name is joseph i'm working at usg global uh, my question is uh, is it safe to use shampoo every day uh, does it lead to uh, increased hair fall you can cleanse your scalp two to three times a week that would be fine so shampoos contain two cleansers one is sodium lauryl sulfate and the other one is sodium lauryl sulfate sodium lauryl sulfates are good cleansers but they are really hard on hair so you can always choose to use sodium lauryl sulfate shampoos containing sodium lauryl sulfate on a daily basis not on a daily basis you can use it 3 to 2 to 3 times a week okay okay doctor the next question hello doctor i am devinath i am working with tcs question i have a question for you how to deal with this dandruff issues dandruff dandruff is again another distressing condition also known as seborrheic dermatitis it is mainly seen over seborrheic areas which include your scalp behind your ear nasolabial flexures chest trunk etc to find a solution for dandruff i need to examine the patient closely i need to see whether he has got fine scale or thick plaques over localized areas of his scalp but based on these we we, we decide on what treatment to be given for this he can use um, shampoos containing um, ketoconazole zinc pyrethione keratolytic such as salicylic acid and if it is associated with itchiness also you can use mild steroid also thick plaques on the scalp you can use shampoos containing coal tar uh, etc okay so then she needs to consult a dermatologist to assess and evaluate her scalp to come to a final conclusion okay doctor this is our next query Hi, I'm Pretty and I'm working in UST Global. And my question for today is can we use body lotions for face? Very sensible question. Body lotions being used on face. The skin over your face and your body is totally different, right? So most of the body lotions are designed to to decrease the dryness over your skin on your body. That is it is most of them are in, are incorporated with oil formulations to make it more hydrating and to make it to moisturize your skin so if you end up using the same for your skin on your face you might end up getting lot of eruptions and breakouts okay. so not all of them but most of them yes keeping this in mind i wouldn't advise one one to use body lotion on face okay they should stick to a moisturizer which is suitable for face Doctor do you have any solution for split ends Yes um there is no treatment per se for uh, split ends but yes um minimizing the use of hair straightening products and chemicals can reduce the occurrence of split ends like i already said hair has got a living part beneath the scalp and a non living part above the scalp too much of style styling products can cause dryness to your uh, hair which could result in split ends no matter what you do you cannot mend a split end timely uh, trimming that is once in every 6 months would prevent it okay. no miracle shampoos or no magical conditioners can mend a split end okay doctor we have few male questions how can i get rid of my pimples um acne or pimples is one of the most common malady among adolescent though it is a physiologic process it is considered as a disease due to the disfigurement it causes and the inflammatory process certain hormones play a very important role in development of acne so does uh, certain bacteria mainly proto propionibacterium acnes there are different types of it 
starting from open comedones, closed comedones, to inflammatory acne or the acne with pus filled pus, pus tears, that is pus filled acne then the variant seen in old people that is called senile acne then um, uh, then those seen in um, industrial workers due to occupational exposure to certain chemicals which is called um, chloracne then seen in infants it is called inf infantile acne due to application of certain medications like long-term use of topical steroids could also result in acne there is an interesting variant of acne seen in violin players that is called fiddler's acne that is mainly seen over the chest where they keep the violin to play. So there are many types of acne. Based on the condition, we could design a treatment pattern for the patient. Starting from proper skin care regime, that is face washes including salicylic acid or any other keratolytics or topical medications such as antibacterials or you know to reduce the pigmentation and to reduce the size of the sebaceous gland. Apart from all this, certain preparations containing antibacterial and retinoids could also help in improving acne. And if none of these work, we have the next level of treatment uh, like acne peels meant for acne and then um, certain oral tablets for acne. But again, based on the stage which the patient is in, we decide the treatment to be given to the patient. Okay. So it's always better to consult a qualified dermatologist for your treatment. Doctor, what are the treatment options for dark circles? No matter how well you dress or how perfect your makeup is, dark circles can cause a blemish on your beauty. The fact it's due to multiple factors. Mainly, one is genetic, uh, that is hereditary. Second, hormonal changes. Then, sun exposure. Then, too much of rubbing. It is very common in allergics, that is atopics. They tend to keep rubbing their eyes. As a result of which, what happens is the blood vessels are below the skin. The superficial blood vessels they rupture and could result in pigmentation, bluish black pigmentation, lack of sleep. Then. Um, too much of makeup also that is too much of makeup gives friction to that area that could in turn give rise to frictional pigmentation on that particular area and also some have tear trough that is a hollow a depression seen from the inner canthus of the eye till the mid, mid pupillary line there will be a hollow there so that could also contribute to uh, dark circles so to reverse that again lifestyle modification dietary improvement and um, should stop rubbing your skin and also i would like to mention one more reason that is use of kajal containing lead that could also give rise to uh, you know a dark, dark circle a pigmentation and also certain autoimmune conditions like lichen like planus pigmentosis all this can lead to dark circles to reverse that dietary uh, use of vitamin e vitamin k and antioxidants would be suffi sufficient all this cannot be cured completely but yes they can be kept under control and also alpha hydroxy acid in minimal quantities and lasers also work wonders in people suffering from dark circles it's a common routine among Malayalis to use oil frequently does it improve hair growth absolutely not all they do is to nourish your hair neither does oiling increase hair growth nor does shampooing cause hair fall too much use of shampoos can dry your hair like I already mentioned about the sodium lauryl sulfate and laurate sulfate right and people are born with a certain number of hair follicles right and no follicles are formed anew after birth none, so none of these factors contribute in growth of hair or fall of hair and also I forgot to mention adequate use of sunscreen would also help to a certain extent to prevent sun induced damage to your skin along with this I would like to suggest use, use sunscreens that is it would help you reduce the sun induced damage as well as pigmentation that is caused due to sunlight. I think with all these tips and solutions it is possible to accomplish a luxurious mane and a flawless skin. Absolutely. All your further queries will be answered to udiaryrosebowl at gmail.com. Thank you.